Hi guys, today we're going to talk a little bit about face protection and uh, what I'm currently using for foam cleaning skirmish compared to what I was using previously. Uh, but I also wanted to mention the types of eyewear that I wear for a Bristol Blast. So I've got these uh, Bolle safety specs, they are yellow lenses and I've used them for about two years now with no issues. I quite like the yellow, sometimes I forget that they're actually yellow lenses and I start calling out uh, colours that are slightly off colour uh, to people and they wonder why I'm being an idiot and it's because of these. And they're really good, they're quite cheap, they're like £9 off Amazon, uh, but they're no good for an FFS, so they're perfectly fine for a... In fact, they would be good for an FFS if you don't mind being shot in the face with a 300 FPS blaster, that's entirely your choice. But my choice, my personal choice, is to not wear these at an FFS, I only wear these at a, for, uh, at a Bristol Blast. At a foam plate and skirmish, I choose to wear a full face protection system, it's a helmet with a face guard, um, but before that there was something else that I used to use and I'm going to hand you over to other me who's going to take you through uh, those two different types of face protection. I hope you guys enjoy. Right, so this is a closer look at the first mask that I ran at FFS. And the reason I wanted a full face mask was because we were running 300 FPS blasters, well, trying to run up to 300 fps blasters and I didn't fancy taking a dart to the face. Uh, I don't generally react well to darts to the face, that's just me and I know that so I thought I know I will get myself a mask. And I went for this one, it's reasonably cheap, less than £20 and it looks, well I think it looks really cool. Uh, I went at the, the contact of the shop I got it from and asked to see if I could get another one of these. Um, to put on the other side didn't happen but uh, I'll quickly go over why I thought it was a good idea to start with. Now, first of all um, with these masks I'm always worried that they're not going to fit and this one didn't fit so I had to move that out of the way I had to cut out a section of the rubber here and put some foam there so I could fit my giant nose in there. So that ruined the fan that came with it because the fan wasn't powerful enough to get all the air around because there was a massive gap in the middle. I also adjusted some of these bits because they were impacting my vision, I couldn't see properly. So what I then did was I went and I modded and upgraded the fan. So there's a button somewhere, there it is, where I can get this off. So I modified the cover, cut it down a bit so I could fit a nine volt battery, rewired it with a little switch so that it wasn't running all the time, uh, and juiced it up, and it worked okay. It wasn't, uh, well, it worked okay when I wasn't running around like a nut job. Um, you could feel the air moving around in there. Uh, it was much better on this side, as you'd expect, as opposed to that side, which is why I was interested in getting another one, so that I could do exactly the same on this side and have two bits of air flowing in there and trying to stop the fogging. That was the idea anyway. I then ran it in my first foam filling in skirmish and quickly realized that it wasn't going to do. Uh, this was the prototype game, I think, um, to test the venue and it was nothing but, but fog in and moisture and I couldn't see anything. Plus the way that it sits, your eyes are much further down. You would want them up here and they're actually much further down kind of in this area. So your peripheral vision and anything sort of below here you can't see so you're trying to get to all of your gear trying to look at where you're putting your feet it's almost impossible uh, and whilst this doesn't make a lot of noise it does make a little bit of noise because it's juiced up so for the second one I thought what can I do uh, well I'll add some ventilation in so I drilled some holes to try and let the heat pass out now these probably could do with being massive holes right away along there and then it's like well What's the point? Because rainwater might get in there if we're running in a, 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 a game where it's raining and it sort of defeats the object. But even with these holes that I drilled thinking that they might help, they didn't. It did exactly the same. Couldn't see anything. It was a terrible experience. I hated every second of wearing it. As much as I really like the look of it, it wasn't very good. So I upgraded, which you've seen this before. This is my other helmet. This is this one. 
Now this was more expensive, but it was a present. And I like this one a lot because I don't have to worry about the fit on my face. This fits over my nose. My nose doesn't even touch this. There's plenty of room. Plus it's slightly adjustable as well. Although I wouldn't, it's not as easy as they make it out to be. Um, it is adjustable because you can adjust all of these bits here to pull this up forward. You can move this out to move it back if you want to and just adjust it the way that you want. I like it the way that it is. I don't need to pull this off to take it off. I can loosen the back strap and pop it over my head, tighten up the back strap and this doesn't interfere at all. It's fully ventilated so the air can get in there. The only time this front bit fogs is when I'm stationary. So if I'm stood still in a building, just breathing, the moisture will start to fog up a little bit, but the moment I start moving, it goes away, it's gone. Uh, this pops off for really easy cleaning, so you can clean the inside because this does capture a lot of moisture and it drips down, which is, is not fun. It's, it's not a pleasant experience when you're wearing it and it gets on your beard perhaps, but it's much better that happening and you can wipe your face afterwards than not being able to see at all. Uh, what I do like about it is it's got some room for patches. So there's a couple of patches I've got on there at the moment. I'm going, to, I'm going to move these around to fit another one on there. I'm going to do a separate video about patches, I think. But uh, there's more room on the back. The thing that I really, really like is if I wanted to, I could mount camera mounts here. Uh, but I'm not going to. I've got my mount here with a NVG night vision goggle mount and a bit of foam underneath to sort of stop it from moving about because it does rattle a little bit. Inside, you've got some foam pads that you can move about and put where you want. Uh, I've sort of got them where I want. They might need a, some slight adjusting, only a little bit, because for long, if, if I'm wearing this for, let's say, more than an hour, it starts to hurt my head a little bit. Um, I don't know if that's because of the way I've got it set up. I might have to have a little look at it. Mainly, I think it's these two, but if I don't have them on, it wobbles about on my head a bit. It's odd, but it's got a, an adjustable back strap that's really easy to clamp it to the back of your head uh, with again some foam padding on the back some foam padding on the front and then a really useful chin strap that you can just clip in and then clip out and yes I I thoroughly prefer this over the other one it's got a nice place to mount the camera the other one didn't I had to try and jerry-rig something and that fell off earlier when I was looking at it and in trying to sort of get the camera angle I sort of try and go for, for for that now that's what I used on the last one when I was recording FFS3 and that seemed to work pretty well can be knocked pretty easily it's as tight as I can get it without damaging something I think because of this metal right here it doesn't compress and squeeze it really nicely I might um, see if I can do something and add something in between like a shim of some kind, uh, maybe like a really thin washer that just adds a little bit of extra room and stops it from moving around. But overall for the price, which I think, I think it was about 60 odd quid, but it was a present. Um, I wouldn't go out and buy this for a Bristol Blast, but for something like an FFS where you want full face protection, you can go for some of the other ones that are a bit more stylish, but I specifically wanted it to look like this because it's a bit tank-like. You look like a bit of a tank when you're wearing it. And I'm a big guy. Um, those really fashionable paintball kind of uh, motorcycle helmets that look all sleek and shiny just don't look right on my face. Uh, whereas big and intimidating is kind of what I kind of go for. I'm, I'm the distraction generally. Um, I will be there shouting, making noise. And if you're looking at me, I'm doing my job right. Um, and like the last one where I didn't do that at all because I didn't have any mega blasters. But anyway, uh, that's generally what I do. It's not always what I do, but it's generally what I do. And that's why I like this because I can see out of it, whereas the other one, I cannot. And there you have it. I hope you guys like this kind of stuff. If you do, don't forget to give me a thumbs up uh, or leave a comment in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed yet, and I'm not sure why you wouldn't have, uh, you can click this button right by here, and if you want some more modding type footage, you can click this button right by here. I'll catch you guys next time.